Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, take a look at the headlines first. Prime Minister presented first ever National Creators Award, NCA. Global trade has been held back by disruptions at two critical shipping routes, says International Monetary Fund. India proposes a detailed model for United Nations Security Council reform that displays flexibility in veto. After 30 years, India to restart penicillin G manufacture, says Union Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers. Role of internet in drug trafficking and use highlighted in the International Narcotics Control Board Annual Report 2023. Fifth mass bleaching event hits Great Barrier Reef GBR in eight years. In the very first news, Prime Minister presented first ever National Creators Award, NCA. Let us first start and get to know about the National Creators Award. The aim of the National Creators Award is to celebrate the diverse voices and talents shaping India's growth and cultural narrative, further driving positive social change and fostering innovation creativity in digital sphere. This award is spearheaded by MyGov India, which features a wide array of categories recognizing excellence and impact across various domains, including storytelling, social change advocacy, and education in digital sphere. Talking about the creator economy, it refers to the ecosystem of businesses, platforms and individuals that create, distribute and monetize the content online. Furthermore, initiatives like the Digital India campaign has led to the formation of content creators. Now, let us also have a look at the status of the Indian creator economy. There are over 80 million creators and knowledge professionals in India and over 150,000 professional content creators in India who are able to monetize their services effectively, which is now projected to double from $250 billion to $480 billion by the year 2027. There are several factors that are currently influencing the growth of the creator economy. Those include the rise in internet usage due to availability of low-cost data and globalization of content consumption, the adoption of remote and hybrid work, and lastly, the popularity of short-term video content. Furthermore, let us also understand the significance of the creator economy at present. The promotion of India's cultural ethos through creative storytelling acts as a plus point for the country. It provides exceptional content that has both entertainment value and social messaging. And lastly, it also influences the increase in job roles like video editors, virtual assistants and graphic designers. In another news, global trade has been held back by disruptions at two critical shipping routes, says International Monetary Fund IMF. According to the Portwatch platform, which is a collaborative initiative of IMF and the University of Oxford, due to attacks on vessels in the Red Sea, the volume of trade through Swiss Canal dropped by 50% year-over-year in the first two months of the year 2024. The Swiss Canal is the shortest maritime route between Asia and Europe. It usually accounts for about 15% of global maritime trade. Portwatch pointed out that several shipping companies diverted their ships around the Cape of Good Hope. Additionally, due to the severe drought in Panama Canal, trade volume fell by almost 32% from the previous year. Panama Canal connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans through the narrow isthmus of Panama. It usually accounts for about 5% of the global maritime trade. Now let's discuss the impact of trade disruption. Supply chain disruption may lead to inflationary pressure and food and energy security threats. Increased delivery time due to diversions hurts companies with limited inventories. Ship rerouting could affect customs records on imports and exports. This will make it more difficult to gauge the underlying momentum of global trade and economic activity in the coming months. Furthermore, here are the initiatives taken for stability in the Red Sea. Operations Prosperity Guardian Launched by the US, it is a multinational security initiative under the umbrella of the Combined Maritime Forces that focuses on security in the Red Sea. Its members are the UK, Bahrain, Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, Norway, Seychelles and Spain. Lastly, Operation Aspites, launched by the European Union to restore regional stability around the Red Sea. Moving on to the next news. India proposes a detailed model for United Nations Security Council UNSC reform that displays flexibility in veto. Participating in intergovernmental negotiations on UNSC reform, India, along with Brazil, Germany and Japan, all members of G4 nations, propose the reform model. Before delving into the news, let's discuss about the United Nations Security Council UNSC. 
UNSC is one of the six principal organs of UN with the primary responsibility for maintaining international peace and security. UNSC's permanent members who have the veto rights are China, France, Russia, UK and USA. And the non-permanent members on two-year terms include Africa, Asia, Latin America, Western Europe and others and Eastern Europe. Each member has one vote. It is the only United Nations organ that has the power to make decisions that member states are obligated to implement. Its reform is being sought as UNSC does not represent contemporary world. It has inadequate regional representation and due to the misuse of power by permanent members. Now coming back to the key highlights of the proposed model by India. First and foremost, it proposed enlarged membership. 11 permanent members and 14 by 15 non-permanent members with a two years term to be elected based on current practice. Secondly, equitable regional representation. Representation of six new permanent members, two from Africa, Asia Pacific, Latin America and Caribbean each, and one from Western Europe and other members. In terms of the working methods of council, an affirmative vote of 14 by 15 of 25 by 26 members will be required for a decision. Additionally, no veto right to new permanent members until decided by a review, held 15 years after reform came into force. Lastly, for the relationship between UNSC and United Nations General Assembly UNGA, Council should hold regular consultations with President of UNGA, submit annual report and special reports to UNGA and more. Moving on to the next news. After 30 years, India to restart Penicillin G manufacture, says Union Ministry for Chemicals and Fertilizers. Penicillin G is an active pharmaceutical ingredient, API, used in manufacturing antibacterial drugs to treat pneumonia, meningitis, gonorrhea, syphilis. It is also known as benzyl penicillin or benzyl penicillinic acid. In 1928, Scottish biologist Alexander Fleming isolated the first specific form of penicillin from Penicillium fungi. For this, he shared Nobel Prize in Physiology Medicine for the discovery in 1945. It is administered intravenously or intramuscularly due to the poor oral absorption. Like many other APIs, manufacturing penicillin G was phased out from India due to cheaper imports from China after globalization. Let's learn a little more about active pharmaceutical ingredient APIs. API or bulk drug is key ingredient of a drug or medicine which lends it the desired therapeutic effect or produces the intended pharmacological activity. Despite India being third largest pharmaceutical industry by volume in world, it is primarily dependent on bulk drug import, particularly from China. Key issues in established API manufacturing unit include huge initial costs, intense global competition and more. Here are the initiatives taken for self-reliance in API. The Ministry of Chemicals and Fertilizers has launched Scheme for Promotion of Bulk Drug Parks Production-linked incentive, PLI scheme for pharmaceuticals covers APIs. And PLI scheme for domestic manufacturing of key starting material, KSMs, or drug intermediates, and API. Moving on to the next news, role of internet in drug trafficking and use highlighted in the International Narcotics Control Board Annual Report 2023. As per the report, internet has increased the availability of narcotic drugs, psychotropic substances and related chemicals on the illicit market front. Before we start, let us first get to know about the International Narcotics Control Board INCB. It has a secretariat in Vienna, Austria, which was established in 1968 in accordance with the Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs 1961. It is an independent and quasi-judicial monitoring body for implementation of the United Nations International Drug Control Conventions. Other than that, it has 13 members, each of whom elected by the Economic and Social Council for a period of five years. For the prevention of internet exploitation for drug trafficking, the International Narcotics Control Board has taken several initiatives. Those are the Global Rapid Interdiction of Dangerous Substances GRIDS program and the Project International Operations on the New Psychoactive Substances (ION). Coming back now, let us discuss about the role of internet in drug trafficking. Crypto markets or online dark net marketplaces located on the deep web are constantly being used for the wholesale drug trade because of its anonymity and safety. Various social media platforms are also being used as local marketplaces and also making inappropriate content accessible to the children and adolescents. Moreover, by using the internet pharmacies and telemedicine, patients' safety is at risk from the illegal internet outlets that sell drugs without prescription. 
And lastly, the global trade in illicit pharmaceuticals, which is estimated at $4.4 billion. Due to these illicit activities, several challenges are also posed by the internet to drug control. Encrypted communication methods posing difficulties for prosecuting online trafficking offences. Due to the global outreach of internet, the offenders sometimes use regions with less stringent law enforcement to evade extradition. And lastly, the online presence of fentanyl and other synthetic opioids. To overcome these challenges, few recommendations have also been provided, which include the online platforms should be used to prevent non-medical use of drugs and raise awareness about harms of drug use. Formulation of legislation and policy to prosecute the illegal marketplaces operating on social media platforms. And lastly, utilizing the real-time counter-trafficking tools will further help to develop actionable intelligence against traffickers that exploit e-commerce services. In another news, fifth mass bleaching event hits Great Barrier Reef GBR in eight years. Before this event, GBR has suffered mass coral bleaching in 1998, 2002, 2016, 17, 20, and 22. Bleaching occurs when healthy corals become stressed by spikes in ocean temperatures, causing them to expel algae living in their tissues, which drains them of their vibrant colors. Before discussing the causes, let's understand about coral reefs. They are made up of colonies of thousands of tiny individual corals called polyps. These marine invertebrate animals have hard exoskeletons made of calcium carbonate. In India, coral reefs are present in Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Mannar, Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshwadeep Islands and Malwan in Maharashtra. Now take a look at the causes of mass bleaching events. First and foremost, climate change induced warming. Example, current underwater heat wave is most intense in southern GBR, which is most affected by bleaching. Secondly, rising frequency of El Nino increases frequency and severity of mass bleaching events. Thirdly, lack of wind and currents may result in less mixing of water layers, clearer seas, and deeper penetration of solar irradiance, which can intensify bleaching. Other causes include the extreme low tides, pollution, overexposure to sunlight, and more. Further, Great Barrier Reef stretches for more than 2,300 kilometers along the northeast coast of Australia. It is the world's largest coral reef complex, located in the Pacific Ocean, and was declared a World Heritage Area in 1981. This reef structure is composed of and built by billions of tiny organisms known as coral polyps. In today's Personality in News, we will discuss Sambhudan Fonglu. 1850-1883. Government paid tribute to the Janjatiya Nayak Sambhudan Fonglo. He was an Indian freedom fighter from Longkhor in North Kachar Hills of Assam's present-day Dima Hasao district. In terms of his contribution, his concern over British annexation of Kachar in 1832 led him to revolt against the regime. He understood the Britishers' divide-and-rule policy and organized the Damasi youth to deal with it. He organized his army and attacked the British army led by Major Boyad and killed him. He displays values of courage, leadership, altruism, and more. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. Former chairperson of Enforces Foundation, Sudha Murthy, was nominated to Rajya Sabha. Under Allocation of Business Rules 1961, the subject nominations to the Rajya Sabha is allocated to Ministry of Home Affairs. Centre has extended remission of duties and taxes on exported products scheme to advance authorization holders, which refers to manufacturer exporters or merchant exporters tied to supporting manufacturer. Ministry of Cooperation inaugurated the National Cooperative Database. It provides all information pertaining to cooperative sector, like number of cooperatives in states or union territories and in different sectors. Mysore Paints and Varnish Limited, MPVL, the sole manufacturer of Indelible Inc., received its largest order yet from Election Commission for 26.55 lakh vials of marker. Under Rule 49K of Conduct of Election Rules 1961, every elector shall allow his left forefinger to be inspected by presiding officer or polling officer and an Indelible Inc. mark to be put on it. India has been bestowed with Measles and Rubella Champion Award by Measles and Rubella Partnership. The partnership comprises a multi-agency planning committee, including American Red Cross, World Health Organization and more. International Commission on Stratigraphy rejected proposal to declare the start of Anthropocene Epoch in geologic time. Anthropocene Epoch is an unofficial unit of geologic time. 
It describes the most recent period in Earth's history when human activities started to have a significant impact on Earth's climate. Taiwan urged China not to change the status quo around waters near Kinmen Islands. Kinmen is the principal island of a group of 12 Kinmen Islands. It is under the jurisdiction of Taiwan and is located in the Taiwan Strait at the mouth of mainland China. The fifth edition of annual Indo-Japan military exercise Dharma Garjin, held in Japan and India alternatively, concluded in Rajasthan. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.